So I could go on and on, get more and more tracks. The bottom line is this IEM elicits an emotional response from me. Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we talk about high-value hi-fi, home theater, and headphone equipment. You're getting sleepy. You're going to subscribe to The Cheap Audio Man. I don't know. So, today we're talking about the 7 Hertz Timeless IEM. It's a planar IEM. So, sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the 7 Hertz Timeless. What's in the box? What's in the box? They actually come with a really cool carrying case. It's metal. Look at that. Brushed aluminum or brushed titanium, brushed adamantium. It's silver metal. All right, then you got a Z over here and it's got a magnetic closure. Magnetic closure. <laughs> By the seven herbs timeless. Okay. Then it comes with ear tips and stuff like that. Another little box. This also has coffee on it. The cool thing about it is this looks like a superhero. Like this should be on somebody's chest. Like if they were wearing a superhero outfit, that would be their superhero thing. Okay, it looks like it comes with uh, some little metal inserts. I'll take pictures of all this. This is getting awful similar to an unboxing, and I don't, I don't like unboxings. All right, and we got some ear tips. A bunch of them, actually. They look really nice. The ear tips that came with them are the ones that I've been using. So they have silicone, and then these are also silicone. I mean, maybe all these are silicone. Those look like maybe a translucent, translucent foam, but they're not foam. They're shaped like foam, but they're silicone. Very impressive. So probably the coolest box I've seen for an IEM. Probably the best ear tips, with the exception of Moondrop. Kano or Kato, I've never gotten it right. With the exception of those, so almost the best ear tips. Okay, so let's talk about the hype train. Is it a hype train? All aboard! Woo, woo! The hype train. I kind of have an issue. I take issue with the hype train, a hype train thing. Hype train, generally, this is for me. I'm just, I can only talk from my perspective. When I hear something's overhyped, in my brain it says, okay, Everybody's lying, right? It's some massive conspiracy between some product and everybody's given these guys a great review or it's being written up or everyone's talking about it. But the hype, hype train, I kind of feel like it's negative. If a product is good and the reviewers are evaluating the product on its merits, maybe it won't be their exact personal preference and they can celebrate a product, whoops, and everything that is doing correctly then it's not hype. It's just people being honest. So if something's good, it's just good. And in this case, 700 Timeless are good. Now, I don't think they're perfect. I think there are a couple, I wouldn't call them issues, a couple of things that could make someone maybe not want to buy it. That's it. It would come down to preference. But they are fairly remarkable. Is it hype? No, I just think they're good. And just because something gets a lot of good reviews, it shouldn't be considered the hype train. Just be happy there's a good product out there. All aboard the hype train. I wrote a lot of notes about this with timestamps, so one can go back and listen to those tracks if they would like to, if they have the 7 hertz or if they have another IEM. And hear what um, I'm trying to hear or trying to convey at least. And overall, this 7 Hertz Timeless is absolutely remarkable. I've got a little kind of wrap up, but it is great. But I'm going to point out the things where I think it's not perfect. Nothing can be perfect, right? Roctopus, mu <laughs> Roctopus mugs now available. I actually didn't do that on purpose. I just wanted to put that there so I didn't knock it over. All right, these can have a bit of sibilance. Helmet, unsung hero, 44 second mark, there's sibilance. Sibilance at 46 in the 47 second mark of unsung by Helmet, where he says, association. It wasn't like that. Association. I can't remember. However, between 128 and 132, it is some of the best symbols that I've heard, and that's going to be a recurring theme with percussion. Per 
concussion on the seven hertz timeless probably unmatched at least i haven't heard anything come close now to be fair i haven't listened to like a thousand dollar iems or whatever but it's pretty fantastic um metallica ride the lightning at the 13 second mark there the drums the floor tom it's the big tom doom, when he's hitting them like that way too thick it is very boosted and what i would consider to be maybe the middle to upper bass sometimes on the wrong tracks it can sound a bit hollow kind of like it's in a plastic box it's definitely not what i would consider to be balanced it doesn't cover up the mids, but it just, it does something. There, there's some boosted frequencies down there that just aren't quite in line with the rest of the frequency response. Scentless Apprentice by Nirvana at the five second mark. The bass sounds boomy and almost hollow like you are inside the drum head. But while the bass is like powerful and boosted, it's also visceral and it presents in a way that can maybe be offensive to some on certain tracks it's not always going to be distracting most of the times it's actually just going to add to the visceral nature of the sound signature but i don't think it's balanced while it can be distracting at times it absolutely makes me sit up and and listen because this is a sound signature i've never heard from another iem or a speaker for that matter because generally when there's a, that big of a boost somewhere in the bass it completely covers up the mids and the mids really fantastic most of the time stuff can't do that without completely just drowning out the mid-range and covering it up alice in chains the one you know at the one minute and 24 second mark it is probably not probably it is the best rendition presentation of the electric guitar kind of fading out it's it's like cymbal decay but i mean the guitar is actually right but it's kind of just like mm. it is fantastic it is the best I've ever heard that song. One minute, 24 second mark. Alice in Chains, the one you know. At the one minute and 30 second mark, the high, he opens up the hi-hat a little bit and it kind of slow 16th notes on there. Again, percussion, perfect, percussion perfection. That's all I'll say. Percussion perfection. Lena Hall, Creep, if you've never heard that song, stop what you're doing, key it up on Amazon Music or something and listen to it because it is a torture test for speakers or headphones 220 to 240 in that song really will uncover the limitations of headphones iems speakers whatever it is because she gets so high and holds those notes for so long there can be resonance and she's i think starting to overpower the mic so the mic is actually distorting but if your headphones have any issues in the upper mid-range it's gonna fall apart real quick and you're gonna hear it real quick this, the 7 hertz timeless, perfect. Didn't even break a sweat. If you haven't heard that part, listen to it. And you, I think you'll know what I mean. Higher Love, Steve Winwood, first 14 seconds. Bunch of percussion again. Flawless. Cry Little Sister from the Lost, Lost Boys soundtrack. In the first 30 seconds, huge, wide, large. The organ was low and stepped back. And then, boom, the song came in. The dynamics of this IEM are probably best that I've heard. And the placement and the, the width is a very large, I'm hearing things from different directions and soundstage and imaging, whatever you want to call it. It's big. It's not closed in, in your ear. This is an experience. So I think Cry Little Sister is a perfect example of the overall sound signature of the IEM. Because while it's simultaneously boosted in the bass, it's also crystal clear in the mid range. And it's also wide. Usually when there's that much mm, in the bass, then it completely covers up the mid mids. I had a V Moda headphone that didn't, it was a little bit more boosted than this across more frequencies. And it was just, you, the mids were completely veiled. It was just horrible. Got Me Wrong by Allison Chains, the MTV unplugged version. At the five second mark, there is a, he bumps the mic stand. And I've, always, I've known that that, whatever that was, was there. I've listened to the song dozens of times, but through the Seven Hertz Timeless, when he bumped the mic, whatever, it was so realistic that it snapped my brain into seeing exactly what it was at that given moment. That's what this thing does. It just pulls you into the music, it makes it realistic. It's like it's happening inside your head. Not like you're listening to music, like you're experiencing music. I know this doesn't make sense, but it's so 
realistic it's certain parts and then the parts that it's not realistic it's not offensive except for some of the sibilance issues sibilance issues that kind of gets to me the bass is fine because it's not really affecting anything else the percussion in this track the first 24 seconds absolutely 100 percent flawless the tonality is probably the best i've ever heard waffle by seven dust just sat back and listened tried to pick it apart just sat back and enjoyed it and that's always a good sign for me when i'm just lost in the music so i could go on and on get more and more tracks the bottom line is this i am elicits an emotional response from me and while i don't think the frequency response is perfect i think there's a boost in the upper bass and i think there's sibilance issues with this iem it's not all the time and the boost in the bass is okay most of the time because i like i like a little junk in the trunk I like a little butter on the bottom i like it a little thick weighty i haven't heard anything that sounds close to these i have heard things that have similar maybe similar characteristics from a frequency response but as far as space clarity yeah some 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 ims have a boosted bass or whatever some have extreme clarity but they don't have the tonality they don't have the realistic nature of the music that the seven hertz has i have uh 10 hi-fi p1 and p1 plus i really like the 10 hi-fi p1s it's extreme clarity and i love it but they take a lot of power they don't have any bass to speak of and they're very closed in p1s p1 plus i'm getting to know a little bit better they're just different than the p1s neither one of them touches the seven hertz just amazing they may not be for you though because they do have that boost in the bass Here's the thing, this IEM can actually be fatiguing, and not fatiguing in a way that even though there's some sibilance issues, it's not fatiguing in a way where it's coming from the treble. It's fatiguing in a way because it's so intense and it sucks you into the music and it kind of fakes you out. It kind of has you lean in, like if you're watching a movie or something, you get the dialogue dialed in just right, and then all of a sudden there's a bunch of explosions and shakes you out of it same thing with this i am it kind of pulls you in and then all of a sudden wham it just presents the music because it's so dynamic because of this it can get a bit exhausting because it's so intense and not intense like forward i it's hard to explain it's just there is so much realism and emotion coming from me when i'm listening to this thing sometimes I'm like i need a break from the seven hertz it's just too much it's like when Professor X has to take off his helmet because he's just seeing, seeing so much. <laughs> That's what the 7 hertz is like. This is not a perfect IM, but I do think it's perfect in its uniqueness and personality and the way that it presents the music. It is something else. It's just something else. At $220, um, I don't think this should be your only IM. It could be. If you're not into that bass, you might. I, I'd take that back. I think anybody's going to like this IM. There's so much to like. It's so different from other things. It's really incredible to hear. I think it's $220, and Linsol sent these out to me, so thank you, Linsol. Linsol sells a whole bunch of IEMs, headphone equipment, things like that. I'll link, uh, I'll link their store in the description. It's re this is a really remarkable IEM. Layering, separation, sound signature, tonality, space, width, it's different it's very very unique i've never heard anything quite like this i've heard frequency response tonality it's just it's something else so highly recommended but there's a bass boost and there's some sibilance sibilance might be a deal breaker for some the bass is kind of fun and i didn't really have any problem with it so if you want to support the channel sign up for patreon patreon.com slash chief audio man every sunday night we have patreon only zooms we also have patreon only facebook group you can also buy the seven hertz time list those are affiliate links i will get a commission if you buy the product it doesn't cost you anymore though it's a great way to support the channel you can also buy a rocktopus mug or sign up for amazon music for free click on the link sign up you get three months for free or disney plus for free i get a couple of dollars so don't binge watch anything on netflix or hulu binge listen through your new seven hertz timeless iems and fill your soul with happiness and with that i'm randy i'm the cheap audio man